do you have to design frequency counter using 8051 microcontroller designing frequency counter means your system should be able to find the frequency of unknown signal for example here when signal is shown that is square wave signal and we want to find frequency of this signal this is the unknown signal so it is frequency counter it is giving you uh, the frequency of unknown signal so we have used here 805 microcontroller this is for example unknown signal it is connected to p3.4 and as a output I means final output we won't get here that is in the form of frequency for example frequency is of 1 megahertz like that answer we won't get but we will get some count related to this frequency and we have to do the calculations for this frequency. Now this is unknown signal and you have studied timer and counters of 8051. Timer uses internal clock frequency whereas counter uses external clock frequency. So just observe here this external clock that is square wave you can uh, count the frequency of square wave only if it is not square wave that means if you want to find the frequency of signal other than square wave maybe sine wave or triangular wave so first you have to convert it into square wave and then you can use it to find the frequency going to use you can use timer one also as a counter but in this example i am going to use timer zero as a counter listen it properly timer zero we are using as a counter so we are going to use counter zero you know that the same physical block is used as a timer as well as counter so this counter this is not count counter so timer zero we are going to use as a counter since we are using it as a counter it should work on the external frequency so that external frequency should be connected to pin p3.4 so here what we are going to do we are going to use timer 0 as a counter and we are going to connect unknown frequency whose frequency we want to find so unknown frequency we are going to connect to p3.4 so how timer works after each clock cycle of this unknown frequency timer count will be incremented by work one working of both timer and counter is same after each clock cycle this timer or counter count will be incremented by one and when this count will reach to fffh the flag bit is set to one operation of both is exactly same only thing is that timer count will increment by internal clock cycle whereas counter count will be incremented by external clock cycle here we are going to use unknown frequency as a external clock so counter count will be incremented by one after each cycle of this external clock is our first step we are going to use timer 0 as a counter which will count as per the frequency that is clock cycle of this unknown frequency this is our first step the second is that timer 1 we are going to use as a timer timer 1 we are going to use as a timer that means it will work on internal clock cycle and this timer one we are going to use to generate a delay of one second. So timer one we are going to use to generate a delay of one second. It is, is it clear? Timer zero we are going to use as a counter which will count as per the clock signal of unknown frequency. Timer one will use to generate a delay of one second so what logic we are going to use now for this one second delay we will start this counter 
for one second delay this counter will count unknown clock cycles one second counter will count the unknown cycles suppose this unknown number of unknown cycles are n one second how many cycles are there n cycles are there kiwa for n cycle n cycles we are getting for one second delay n number of cycles tani count kelya tya kiti vela sathi count karta hai to for one second delay so one cycle for how much time period ek cycle kiti vela chi asel e kadu shakto apan n number of cycles for one second so one cycle for how much time is it clear so what we'll do we'll initialize this th0 and tl0 with 0 0 value so at start we'll initialize this two resistors with 0 0 0 0 h value so they will start counting with this 0 0 0 h value so after one second you will get some count in this two resistors th0 and tl0 now we know that n cycles it is counting for one second so one cycle for how much time period so this time period if you get this time is for one cycle so frequency is 1 divided by this time after one second the count will be placed on port p1 and p2 lower digit of frequency count we are sending on port p1 that means tl0 count will send on port p1 and higher eight of frequency count will send on th0 so what we are going to do we are going to use timer 1 to generate a time duration of 1 second 1 second delay it will generate timer 0 is used as a counter with input pulses fed into pin p3.4 at the end of 1 second the values in tl0 and th0 give the number of pulses that were received at pin p3.4 during this 1 second so simple thing it is actually for 1 second uh, we are counting unknown clock signals this gives frequency of unknown signal that is the number of pulses received so calculations of unknown frequency suppose x is the count uh, that is stored in tl0 and th0 resistor then time for one clock pulse of unknown frequency is equal to 1 divided by x that will be in second because uh, we are finding this count for one second so one second divided by x it is time period t of that unknown pulse so frequency we can compute by 1 divided by t so frequency will be equal to 1 divided by t hertz for example suppose the count in th0 and tl0 register after 1 second delay is that a 16 bit count is 0054h so we'll convert it into decimal so we'll get it 84 in decimal so now the time period for one clock cycle will be equal to 1 divided by 84 so that is 0.0119 second and if frequency will calculate that will be equal to 1 divided by this time period so that will be same as this 84 so frequency is 84 hertz this one is because of 1 second so this is how we can compute the frequency now to write a program just go through this register many times we have discussed about this register so t mod register timer mode control register lower four bits are for timer 0 upper four bits are for timer 1 now here thing is different because we are going to use timer 0 as a counter so what we'll do we are going to use software instructions to turn an on and off timer so gate bit is 0 then we are going to use this as a counter not a timer so this bit should be one for counter this bit should be one that's this only the change so here we'll store one we are going to use mode one generally mode one is used 
to count or to generate a delay. So this will be 0, 1. Now this timer 1 we are going to use as a timer. So gate beat is 0. C slash T bar it will be 0 because timer 1 is used as a timer. Again we are using here mode 1. So we'll use here 0, 1. Generally we use mode 1 to generate a delay. So this we have to convert into hex to initialize T mod resistor. So convert it into hex, you will get 1, 5H. So 1, 5H will store in T mod resistor. So microcontroller will understand that you are using timer 0 as a counter and timer 1 as a timer, both we are using in mode 1. So we have to initialize T mod resistor with uh, 1, 5, H. So start writing a program. I'm starting with 0, 0, 0, H, O, R, Z. Then initialize T mod resistor. So we are storing 15H in T mod resistor. Just now we have seen timer 1 is used as a timer and timer 0 as a counter. Set bit P3.4. So we are using P3.4 to connect unknown clock signal. That is for timer 0. So since we are connecting here clock signal, this pin we are using as an input pin. So just for precaution, we are sending logic 1 at this pin. Then uh, for this counter, counter 0, we'll initialize count with 0, 0. Why we are initializing count with 0, 0? Because we want to measure this count. So it will start counting from 0, 0. And it will value will end after one second delay. So we are initializing count resistor of counter 0 with value 0, 0. So both these resistors are initialized with 0, 0. Then we'll start the counter. TR0 is started. It will start counting. But we want a delay. Now delay I have written here. Uh, I have not written here subroutine program. It is Leela. And we have discussed it many time program to generate a one second delay. So for that, uh, we load a count of 10 millisecond that we have already computed and we'll execute that 10 millisecond delay program 100 times. So R0 is initialized with 100. You can convert this 100 into hex or we can write here 100D. So D means it is decimal value. So always I explain you to write or told you to write H. But now uh, you know that for a decimal value, always write in hex only in uh, exam also, but you can write a value in decimal also. You can use a later D. In binary also, we have seen you can write a data in binary in this form also. And there you have to uh, use a later B. So you can convert it into hex and write H. Then our simple delay program, this is the data uh, count uh, we have computed for 10 millisecond delay db uh, ff dbh so that is loaded here for 10 millisecond delay we'll start this timer one check this flag bit whether it is zero or one if it is one our 10 millisecond delay is over so clear this flag bit and uh, decrement this R0. So this 10 millisecond delay program, we are executing 100 times. So which will generate a delay of one second. So here we have started counter. So it will start counting this till this delay, one second delay. So that program is uh, written here. So again, it will go till R0 becomes zero. After this, after one second delay, we have to stop this counter. So you can write here stop counter also. That is clear TR0 instruction you can add here. Or directly you can read a count. 
clear TR0, so counter will stop. The count is in TL0 register and TH0 register. First, we'll read a count of TL0 register that is stored in accumulator and accumulator contents are placed on port P2 as per our interfacing diagram. Then we'll read a contents of TH0. These are stored in accumulator. We'll store the accumulator contents on port P1. And if you want to repeat this, you can write instruction S jump start or you can write, you can stop this program as jump exit and give label exit here. If you want to repeat, you can write here as jump start. So if you write a subroutine for a delay, then it will be easy. So we'll start with our program with address 0000H. The Tmod register is initialized with 15H. That is timer 1 is used as a timer and timer 0 is used as a counter. We'll set this P3.4 as an input port pin. So we'll send a logic 1 on P3.4. As we have seen, this counter register should be initialized to 00H. So it will start count from 00. Then we'll start this counter. So set bit TR0. So counter is started and we want to keep this counter on for one second delay. So we'll call a delay program. We'll write a delay subroutine, which will generate a delay of one second. After completion of this delay, we'll stop a counter and the count value will send on the port as per interfacing diagram. So TL0 is moved in accumulator A and the contents of accumulator are placed on port P2. So TH0, higher 8-bit count, is stored in accumulator and accumulator contents are stored in port P1. And to repeat this program, here the SGEM start instruction is written. So again, it will count the frequency of signal connected at P3.4. After this, we have to write a delay program. So we'll just write a delay to generate a one second delay. So R0 is used as a counter. So it is initialized with 100. You can convert it into hex and write. This TL1 is initialized with DBH and TH1 is initialized with FFH to generate a delay of 10 millisecond. We'll start this timer one, set bit TR1 and we'll check a flag bit. So if flag bit is one, that means 10 millisecond delay is generated. We'll clear flag bit and we'll decrement a count. So 100 times we'll execute this program. After this one second delay, return back to main program. So it will return to this instruction. So this program will give us a count on port P1 and P2. And using this count, we can find the frequency of unknown signal.